asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. We're going to jump straight in to the latest developments, or the latest development in the Sergei Skripal story, the Russian double agent who collapsed eight days ago in a supermarket in Salisbury with his daughter who also collapsed. They're in critical condition. They remain in critical condition and it's been that way for days. We've talked about this pretty much every day. We've commented on the commenting because media outlets and talking heads from day one decided to say that, well, it has to be the Russians. Now you heard on the news there that Theresa May has told MPs late this afternoon that Skripal and Yulia, his daughter, were poisoned by a military-grade nerve agent of a type developed by Russia. That's what she said. She said the government concluded that it was highly likely that Russia was responsible for the attack. And you might have heard in the news the Russian ambassador to the UK has been asked to explain whether it was direct action by the state or whether it was due to the state losing control of its own nerve agent stock. Theresa May addressed Parliament and it seemed to be going well. It started quite well. Mr Speaker, I share the impatience of this House and the country at large to bring those responsible to justice and to take the full range of appropriate responses against those who would act against our country in this way. But as a nation that believes in justice and the rule of law, it is essential that we proceed in the right way, led not by speculation, but by the evidence. Yes. That is why we have given the police the space and time to carry out their investigation properly. Hundreds of officers have been working around the clock, together with experts from our armed forces, to sift and assess all the available evidence, to identify crime scenes and decontamination sites, and to follow every possible lead to find those responsible. That investigation continues, and we must allow the police to continue with their work. Yes, speculation is counterproductive. The police must be allowed to finish their investigation. As I said, it started so very well, but then it went downhill very quickly. This morning I chaired a meeting of the National Security Council in which we considered the inv information so far available. As is normal, the Council was updated on the assessment and intelligence picture as well as the state of the investigation. It is now clear that Mr Skripal and his daughter were poisoned with a military-grade nerve agent of a type developed by Russia. This is part of a group of nerve agents known as Novichok. Based on the positive identification of this chemical agent by world-leading experts at the Defence Science and Technology Laboratory at Porton Down, our knowledge that Russia has previously produced this agent and would still be capable of doing so, Russia's record of conducting state-sponsored assassinations, and our assessment that Russia v views some defectors as legitimate targets for assassinations, the government has concluded that it is highly likely that Russia was responsible for the act against Sergei and Yulia Skripal. What? Jesus Christ, what happened to this? But as a nation that believes in justice and the rule of law, it is essential that we proceed in the right way, led not by speculation, but by the evidence. Yes. That is why we have given the police the space and time to carry out their investigation properly. Ah, to hell with evidence. Who needs evidence? It's the Russians. The Russians did it. So enter Boris Gump then, the UK Foreign Secretary. He's got a job to do and May told us what it is. Listen to this. Mr Speaker, there are therefore only two plausible explanations for what happened in Salisbury uh, on the 4th of March. Either this was a direct act by the Russian state against our country or the Russian government lost control of its potentially catastrophically damaging nerve agent and allowed it to get into the hands of others. This afternoon, my right honourable friend, the Foreign Secretary, has summoned the Russian ambassador to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office and asked him 
asked him to explain which of these two possibilities it is, and therefore to account for how this Russian-produced nerve agent could have been deployed in Salisbury against Mr Skripal and his daughter. My right honourable friend has stated to the Ambassador that the Russian Federation must immediately provide full and complete disclosure of the Novichok programme to the Organisation for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. And he has requested the Russian government's response by the end of tomorrow. All right, OK. We're going to call the Russian ambassador and we're going to say, there's only two possibilities. One, you did it. Or two, you lost the nerve agent and somebody else did it. But it's still your fault. Jesus. As has been mentioned on this programme, porting down the massive chemical and biological weapons manufacturing factory with a huge stockpile of biological neurotoxic weapons is only down the road, a couple of miles away from where this happened. They developed these neurotoxic weapons. It happens right there. Of course, I'm not saying they had anything to do with it. I'm just saying it's there. Surely it's worthy of an investigation. Now, Jeremy Corbyn, the leader of the Labour Party, the leader of the opposition, he gets to respond to Theresa May when she makes a speech, he gets right of reply. I'm not going to play any of it in the interest of time, but I am going to tell you that he got jeered, roundly jeered, for reminding Theresa May that Russian oligarchs have donated around £890,000 to the Tories in the last couple of years. Talked about this yesterday on Sunday View. It's a nonsense, really. It's a drop in the ocean, really, compared to the Israeli money in the country. But we'll leave the Israelis alone for the moment. So that's what um, Corbyn said. He said, you know, what about these Russian oligarchs? And Corbyn said the Conservative Party hasn't introduced new sanctions on money laundering. Rather, the Conservative Party is ignoring it. So when he said this, he was called a disgrace by members opposite, by Conservative MPs, but also by some of his own MPs. And we'll come back to that in a minute. So when May had finished and Corbyn had finished speaking, it was out to the floor. MPs could have their say. Caroline Flint from Labour, Yvette Cooper from Labour, virtue signalling world champions got stuck into Russia. What a shower of bastards the Russians are. And what about the 14 other people we think might have been killed by the Russians? It was incredible. Labour's Chris Bryant called for the banning of Russia today. There were calls to have the World Cup taken from Russia as well. And even a jaded old producer like me was genuinely shocked today. What was I shocked at? We know the place is filled to the brim with traitors, with enemies of the people. Zionist-owned traitors. We know that, but normally they hide it better. There was no attempt to hide it today. Screaming for blood against Russia. All manner of accusations made against the Russians with nary even a slip of proof offered to, um, you know, to, to appease the wider public that any crazy decisions made in the coming months are actually based on evidence. No, they're not. Listen to Ian Duncan Smith, former Conservative Party leader. Listen to this. Well, it's just monumental bollocks from Duncan Smith. If the response from the Russian ambassador is simply not credible, she is quite right to expect the House to back her in taking the most severe action as is required and commensurate. Uh, and she is also right to remind the House and the country that this country, Russia, is now close to being a rogue state as any. It occupies Crimea. It has helped occupy eastern Ukraine. It has created a hell on earth in Syria. It's created a hell on earth in Syria, said Ian Duncan Smith. Now that's a downright lie. Even if you get your information exclusively from the Telegraph, the Guardian, the Observer, the Mail, even if you do, you know that is a monumental lie. That is a lie so terrible, it should see the resignation of Ian Duncan Smith. 
The Russians have not created a hell on earth in Syria at all. Agents of this government, the French, the Israelis and the Americans have created a hell on earth in Syria and it would be worse if the Russians hadn't intervened and stood alongside Bashar al-Assad's government. If they hadn't done that, Syria would now be Mad Max 5, beyond, beyond Thunderdome. Way beyond it, it would be Libya times a hundred. For him to stand there and to say that what's going on in Syria, country full, not so much now, so many of them have been killed, but it was packed to the rafters with beheading maniacs sent in to Syria, as we know, by the agents of the governments I mentioned. For Duncan Smith to stand there and say Syria is Russia's fault is an outrage. And is even now overseeing worse action. This is a country locking up its members of the opposition. It is a country, frankly, we've learnt this lesson before, if we appease a country like this, then we expect even worse. That's disgraceful. And a number of you have been watching this today on Sky or the BBC and you have noticed, you have noticed that Ian Duncan Smith wasn't alone. This was right across the board today. And you know what we didn't have, dear listener? We didn't have a single dissenting voice to that. Nowhere to be seen today was anybody connected with groups like Stop the War Coalition or any of that standing up to say, I disagree with this. I disagree with the tone of this. There's no evidence to suggest the Russians did this. Why would the Russians do this? It doesn't make any sense. I might not like oligarchs like Putin. I might not like what you might call an autocratic um, uh, system, even though on the face of it it isn't because the elections are on the face of it open, but they're not really. They're not here either. You get to choose every five years here between um, a bunch of candidates, 80% of whom are sworn loyalists to the Zionist regime in Tel Aviv. Madness. Not a dissenting voice, not one. Shameless. And I told you earlier that Corbyn was jeered for having a go at the Tories taking donations from wealthy Russians. Shame, shame, they cried. Disgrace, disgrace at Corbyn. Corbyn's an idiot. We know that. But forget it. Chris Leslie is a Labour MP and he knifed his party leader Corbyn right in the kidneys today, not for the first time, but today when he got a chance to speak. This is Corbyn's own man, Chris Leslie, when he got a chance to speak. Chris Leslie. I'm going to say to the Prime Minister that there should be unity across the House yeah. in terms of what I feel is a proportionate and sensible approach that she's taken to analysing what's been happening and coming back to report to the House. And can I also say that there are certain circumstances, as she knows, where we take party political differences of opinion, but when our country is potentially under attack, yeah. that is just not appropriate. Yeah. Can, I, can I thank the Right Honourable Gentleman for the... Ah. <laughs> you heard that, Chris Leslie. What Chris Leslie just did was told Corbyn to go and himself. Right there for the tone that he has adopted. He is absolutely right. This is a question of the national interest. It's a question of the interest of our country and what another state may have done on British soil to people living here in the United Kingdom. And that should be a matter that would con should concern all of us and should be above party politics. <laughs> in other words, there is no room for dissent. None. 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 The Russians are bad. They're the devil incarnate. That's what, our, that's what our Zionist paymasters have told us to say. Therefore, we must all say it. There's to be no dissent. Now, everybody knows Chris Leslie hates Corbyn anyway. He backed Harriet Harman for leader. 
didn't he? And he also resigned from the front bench when Corbin got the job. That isn't news, but incredible the opportunities being taken today on all sides of that place. A more wretched hive of scum and villainy there has never been than Westminster. To quote that brilliant Obi-Wan Kenobi meme, not a voice, dear listener, not a single man or woman stood up and said I'm not being party to this bollocks it is a pack of lies we've been telling the same lies since the 1970s about the Russians and the Russian plans not one MP stood up and said Ian Duncan Smith how can you lay the blame for Syria at the door of Moscow how dare you 20 minutes past the hour. I'm going to take a break. When we come back, we'll try and get through some comments. David Shaler joins me. And later in the programme, I'll be joined by John Hamer. I'm looking forward to speaking with John. Terrible day today. The warmongers are warmongering and there is nothing in their way. There is no fourth estate. There isn't a journalist in the country with the balls or the vagina to stand up to it and to call them out for what they are. Lying Zionist whores, every one of them. <laughs> 